Your average central air or heating system might last 15 or 20 years, and when it comes time, most people just replace it. But one thing they don't do is replace the ductwork, and so in many homes, you can end up with a duct system that stays there for 30, 40 years. And on a very poorly designed duct system, which there are many out there, the inefficiencies over all those years can add up to pay for a completely new heating or air conditioning system outright. Now, when we start diving into ductwork design or fixing problems in ductwork, we can start getting into a lot of math. We can start bringing up a lot of jargon like static pressure, but you can actually see static pressure. You can see inefficiencies. All you need is a little bit of backlighting and a fog machine. When you have a hard 90 like you see here, we could see static pressure in play. And you can see as the air comes up, it shears off on that inner corner. And that leads to a decrease in pressure in that little region right there. On the opposite side, on the top side of that 90, the air slams up against it and we have an increase in pressure there. So we have this big pressure differential across this elbow and this creates the resistance that we can measure. With a soft radius 90 like we see here, that shearing effect doesn't happen on that inner corner. In fact, you could see how the air kind of moves uniformly against both the inner and the outer wall as one. So we're not getting that pressure differential. We're not getting that pressure drop on one side and the pressure spike on the other. And what we just saw with our eyes, we can also see on our tools. So a manometer, for example, on that hard 90, we're reading 0.073 inches of water column. And our CFM airflow out of that duct is about 120, 125 CFMs. On our soft radius 90, we have a completely different story here. Our static pressure is less than half than what we had before at 0.032, and our airflow is increased to 150 or so CFMs. Now, these little differences might not seem like a big deal, but these little inefficiencies can really add up over the years. And they usually pay for it in either one of two ways, depending on what kind of motor we have in our unit. Now, some older units might have what's called a permanent split capacitor motor, and these motors, they can't adjust their speed. Um, so when static pressure increases, they actually start moving less airflow. Now, this doesn't increase the wattage draw of the motor itself, but what it does do is increase cycle time. So the unit runs longer every single cycle. With the newer motors, the ECM motors, they can ramp up and push back against this static pressure to maintain the CFM flow. But to do so, we're taking more wattage to do that. So we're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul one way or the other.